All right, so in this video, uh, we're gonna talk about the paging mechanism. Okay, so in, in our last video, we've talked about, we, we did a brief review about the segmentation. So that basically provides the motivation part. So the motivation, uh, why we need the paging is because segmentation is too much coarse grain. And each segments is just too huge that we end up either with wasting space or you know wasting time because we need to if we don't want to waste space we want to do the memory compaction so that means we need to copy around migrate around different memory segments uh, in order to uh, collect um, those uh, small the the small memory space as memory holes and to put them together to uh, to make them large enough to be able to effectively accommodate the uh, huge memory requests from say some memory intensive applications. So we end up with this dilemma where we're either wasting space or wasting um, runtime performance. So that motivates a need, that stresses a need for a finer grain alternative, which is the paging mechanism, which will be introduced in this slide, okay? So essentially, a paging scheme is just a, you know, a new memory management mechanism that allows the whole physical address space of a process to be partitioned at fine granularity, to be effectively non-contiguous, so that um, all the memory that belongs to a particular running process. They don't have to be contiguous, physically contiguous, physically adjacent with each other within the physical memory, but instead they could be spread across, you know, the whole physical memory range. Okay, so um, the operating system would just divide the whole physical memory into, you know, fixed sized uh, memory blocks and each and every of these memory blocks is called a physical frame. And similarly, the operating system would just divide the whole virtual memory address space into finer grained memory chunks. And uh, each such memory block is of the same size. And also each such memory, virtual log memory chunk is called a virtual memory page. So the virtual memory address, this concept of virtual memory address is essentially nothing but you know a bunch of uh, bookkeeping state information together with some um, data structure which is a core of this lecture page table that collectively help with each other to facilitate this virtual address to physical address uh, translation process so that the operating system by taking into a virtual address could effectively translate the virtual address into the physical address. A logical a virtual memory is a concept that does not physically exist, whereas the physical memory is something that does exist physically uh, within the DRAM that is explicitly managed by the operating system. And uh, one benefit of this fine grain paging mechanism is it effectively uh, improves the flex flexibility. It, it, it enables good flexibility, where any virtual page can go to any free frame whenever it's available there. Okay, so this is a flexibility benefit. And the second benefit of uh, the fine grained paging mechanism is because of uh, it's a good scalability. It, it, it's, uh, it's scalable in the sense that if you want to run, if the operating system wants to run a program of uh, uh, size of uh, n pages or n physical frames, the operating system just needs to locate, the find and locate exactly n free physical frames and just load the memory into these n physical frames and that's it. So it doesn't require these n frames to be physically adjacent with each other. They could be spread across at random locations. And you just need a centralized mechanism, which is a page table, which is a data structure page table to help keep track of those 
um, randomly distributed um, physical frames. Okay, and another benefit is you could just freely, scalably uh, grow and shrink the memory segments whenever you please. Okay, so let's say we have a memory intensive process and all of a sudden it needs to grow dramatically in terms of its memory usage. You can just do so as long as there is enough, there is uh, enough uh, um, fine grained memory frames or memory pages available within the physical memory. Okay. So on this slide, it shows a really simple toy example about how exactly the virtual pages gets mapped to the physical memory. So um, in, the, in the center of the slide, it shows a toy-like physical memory with a capacity of uh, 128 bytes. And this 128 bytes gets effectively divided into eight fixed-sized physical frames. And each, each physical frame is of uh, 16 bytes, starting from frame zero all the way to frame number seven. And on the left-hand side of the slide, we have this particular rounding process, this rounding program's virtual address space, okay? So as you can see, this virtual address space, it spans four virtual pages from page zero to page number three. And this, it also, so this example also shows how the virtual page gets mapped to a particular physical frame. For example, a virtual page number zero, page zero, gets effectively mapped to physical frame number three. And similarly, on the last virtual page, virtual page number three gets mapped to physical frame number two. Okay. So this shows how a virtual page can be mapped to a physical frame in this way. In this example, it has a one-on-one -on -one mapping between each and every virtual page to its cor corresponding, its associated physical frame number. So in the next couple of slides, I'm gonna uh, talk to you about some basics, some fundamentals about the page addressing. Okay, so recall that in, in the previous, in the, in the last lecture, together with the, 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 the last video recording, um, we've learned that segmentation is some coarse grained memory addressing mechanism where uh, we could effectively divide the virtual address into two logical parts, the high bits part, right? And the low bits part. And the high bits are used to index to 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 you know to locate the corresponding segment. So basically, the high bits represent the segment ID, okay. And the low bits are the offset within the particular segment specified by the high bits. And uh, paging, you can kind of interpret paging mechanism as some. Um, generalized segmentation mechanism. But the only difference is that the paging is more fine grained. Okay, it's finer grained. So, similarly, uh, within the paging mechanism, we could also divide the virtual address into these two parts. We have the high bits part and we have the low bits part. If you take a look at this example on the right hand side of the slide, the high bits part are called virtual page number. Okay, which is a short, um, it has a short uh, abbreviation of VPN, which is a short of uh, virtual page number. Okay. Okay, so this is VPN. And in this example, this a virtual address has exactly five bits. And the, the two uh, high bits um, are preserved to represent the page ID or the, the, the virtual page number. And the three low bits from VA0 to VA2, they are offsets. So these are the, um, if you wanna get access to a specific byte within, uh, at that specific offset, this is the, the data, the information that you use to really zoom into a particular page 
specified by the high bits as the page ID, the page number, and then use offset to fetch the exact byte um, located at that particular offset. Okay, so here the question is, how many offset bits do we really need? So you can calculate the total number of offset bits by using this equation log on top of the page size, okay? So in this example, uh, it shows you a table and the table has two columns. The, the left column, it shows the page size and the right column shows the corresponding, uh, the number of bits for the low bits part, essentially the offset part. It asks you to calculate the low bits, the total number of low bits for a particular page size provided. So in the first example, 16 bytes. So if you just do log, 16 gives you four, right? So we have four over here. And if you take a look at the second example, similarly, you can just apply the same equation. Log 2KB gives you essentially 10 plus one gives you 11, right? And let's do one more, four megabytes. You just do the same thing. So one megabytes is uh, 20 bits and four is two bits. So that gives you 22, okay? So this slide shows the answers. Similarly, for 16 KB, uh, for the page size, we end up having a total number of 14 bits for the offset part, okay? So this is how to calculate the below bits. In, in this next example, so we add two more columns to this table. So we have the third column, which is corresponding with uh, the virtual address space, which is a total length of the virtual address. And then we have the rightmost column, uh, corresponding with the high bits, um, the virtual page number part, VPN. So I ask you to calculate how many bits preserved within the high bits part, right? So the calculation should also be trivial in this case. Recall that each virtual address consists of high bits part and low bits part. To calculate the high bits, you could just use the length of the uh, vir uh, the the virtual address subtracting the the length of the low bits. Okay, so in the very first example, ten minus four gives you six. If you take a look at the last example, so the high bit for a thirty-four bit virtual address of with a page size of 16 bytes, the six, 16 KB. So we end up having 64 minus 14 gives you 50. Okay, so this slide shows the answers, which is easy to calculate, okay? So in this example, we introduce one more column at the right-hand side. So it asks you to calculate how many virtual pages could be addressed with the provided information, okay? So how to calculate the total number of virtual pages is by um, using the high bits information. So essentially, the high bits, two to the power of that many, that much high bits gives you the total number of virtual pages. So in the very first example, the high bits has six bits. So that means this virtual Memory, uh, this virtual memory address space has exactly two to the power of six. These many virtual pages, which is essentially, you know, um, two to the power of six gives you um, uh, 16 times four, uh, 64, right? So let's take a look at the last example. So the, the total number of virtual pages given a 50 a high bits is two to the power of 50. This is a relatively huge number as compared to the very first example, okay? 
Okay, so this slide shows the, the answers to all the five different examples within this table. So one caveat over here is the high bits represented for the physical frames so when we're talking about physical memory but not virtual memory, it could be different. Why? It is because the physical memory, so virtual memory is some logical virtual concept which doesn't really exist. And that is why sometimes the capacity of the virtual address space could be dramatically larger than the capacity of the physical memory address space. So the physical memory address space, its capacity is really determined by how much bits, how many bits exactly can you accommodate within your DRAM memory hardware. So this is the reason why the, the total number of physical frames could be, say, dramatically smaller than the, um, the virtual memory, the total number of virtual pages. Okay, so this is one caveat over here. So the next question to ask is, so let's say right now most, I assume most if not all operating systems we're using, no matter whether it's a laptop, servers, workstations, they are using 64 bits operating systems. So this 64 bits, let's assume we're talking about the operating system is configured to run four KB pages for the physical memory. So the question is, how many pages can we have assuming the maximum memory limit? Well, so here, let's assume the, the physical memory exactly the same as the virtual memory. And here, this 64 is essentially the, the, the total number of bits that could be represented by uh, the virtual address, okay? Virtual address. So given that, we also know the size of the page, which is 4 KB. So essentially this question asks you to calculate the total number of virtual pages that could be indexed by this 64-bit uh, virtual address. So how to calculate this by just using 64 divided by log 4 KB. So log 4KB is essentially, you know, 10 plus two, right? So that gives you 64 minus 12 gives you 52. So that means you could effectively index and address two to the power of 50 pages. Assume we have this much physical memory available. But in real world cases, right now, the maximum phys physical memory capacity that we're looking at, that we have in production, is way smaller than this 200, this two to the power of 52 uh, pages. So right now we're talking, uh, the state of the art, we're looking at one TB. This is extremely huge physical memory capacity. But for most cases, if you are talking about your laptop, at most, you have 32 GB, right? Which is way much smaller compared to this extreme case, this theoretical case. So this also, you know, again, um, um, you know, touches the, talks about the differences between this virtual memory capacity versus the physical memory capacity. So in this example, in, in the next slide, the next question to ask is how are we performing the virtual address to physical address mapping? We need a general mapping mechanism. We need a general data structure that perform this uh, virtual address to physical address mapping, a translation process, right? So the question is what exact data structure is best suited for facilitating the address translation? So the answer is we could just use array data structure, okay? If you take a look at this example shown on the right-hand side of the slide. So in this example, the, the top layer, the top level shows the virtual address, the format of virtual address. It has a high bits, it has three high bits. And correspondingly, it has 
uh, four low bits offsets. Okay, so to uh, correspondingly at the second level, it shows the, the format of the uh, physical address. Correspondingly, it has the physical address has exactly six bits, and the high bits are reserved for the so-called PFN, which is a short of uh, physical frame number. Okay, so this is a short uh, PFN, so which has exactly two bits. So we have this so-called address mapper, which is essentially a big array, and we use this big array to to map from the virtual page number into the physical frame number. How to perform this mapping is, um, so we have this array, right? It's a 1D linear array. So let's assume in this array it has a total number of n elements. We use, so each array has its index. And within each element of the uh, array, the element represents it could be used to store some information. And this particular information is exactly the physical frame number. So it uses index 0, 1, n minus 1, n, right? It uses this information, the index, to represent the virtual page number. And it uses the content whatever, to represent the physical frame number. So these are essentially physical frame number, okay? Physical frame number. So the, the big array uh, based uh, page table is also called linear page table, okay? Because of the linear array essentially. So in this example, it shows two different running processes, P1, P1 and P2. And at the top level, it shows us the virtual memory layout for these two different processes. Assume these two different processes, they occupy four virtual pages. Each one of them, they have exactly the same virtual page capacity. And uh, the, the second level, the bottom level, it shows the, the layout for the physical memory and also shows how the operating system provide the mapping from the virtual address space for each and every one of these two processes to the physical memory, okay? So let's assume at, at a certain point of time, there is a memory access that tries to memory, tries to access the very first virtual page for the first process, process one. So let's assume this is um, touching the virtual page number one, which is under zero, the virtual page is under zero, and its offset is also zero because it's touching, it tried to address into the very first byte within the very first virtual page. So this gets effectively mapped over here. Okay, so again, the offset stays the same, but it's only the mapping performs to translate the virtual page into the physical frame. So it maps virtual page number zero from page from process number one gets mapped to physical physical frame zero one two, physical frame number two. Okay. Similarly, if you try to access somewhere in the middle, so let's assume it has an offset of uh, twelve. And similarly, the offset stayed the same. It's still 12, okay? But within the phys same physical frame, which is physical frame number two, okay? If you do the same, um, this example shows a similar, uh, you know, uh, scenario. Um, so in this slide, it shows more information. It shows the, the full picture about how exactly each page table of these two different processes look like. So if you take a look at the page table for process number one, okay, so assume it uses a linear array-based page table. So since its virtual memory capacity is, you know, four virtual pages, 
So we have exactly four elements and we use the index of the array to represent the virtual page number and uh, the content of the uh, array is essentially what? Physical frame number, right? Okay, so the very first virtual page zero gets mapped to physical frame number two, right? And the second page, virtual page number one, gets mapped to physical frame number seven over here. And similarly for virtual page number three, the last virtual page, okay, gets mapped to physical frame number four. Okay. So the same thing for the second process, process number two as well. Okay, so next we introduce the concept, the definition of page table. So a page table is a per process data structure. Okay. So that means each running process has its own page table by default. In the default case, in the next lecture, we will be talking about like different variants of page table. In some specific case, it, all the different processes could share a single page table, but that is just a corner case. Okay, so by default, we assume each and every process has its own page table. It's a per process data structure, which is used to keep track of the virtual pages to the physical frame mapping. In other words, it's a data structure, which is a per process data structure, which is used to facilitate the virtual address to physical address translation. Okay, and its major role is to store the address translation information. So address translation mapping. So the observation that we've already made is, you know, those naive straightforward limit relocation register pair based mechanism is no longer sufficient. It's not sufficient. It's not only sufficient, but also not flexible, right? It's not efficient. So that demands, that stresses a need of a fine grained and more flexible approach, which is a page table mechanism. So within this page table mechanism, assume uh, within the model, uh, each virtual address has exactly M bits. Okay, so next we're going to talk about how how to you know perform the the virtual page the virtual page to a virtual address to the physical address translation process. So within this M bits, the high bits assume we have it has P bits. Uh, it's called P, the virtual page number, VPN. Okay. This is actually VPN. And the page offset is also represented using D. Okay, so this is essentially the um, look into the particular page or the physical frame indexed by the virtual page or by the physical frame number. So in this, in this next slide, it shows this hardware-based mechanism. So starting from the very first, when the CPU generates the first uh, logical address or virtual address. Okay, so again, this virtual address, it has two parts. The high bits is called P and the low bits offset is called D. We use the P as the index, okay, which is the index of this array. um to index into this page table array and it fetches the content of the element of the p element which is essentially f so what is this f information this f is essentially the index for the physical memory or is the in other words is the physical frame number Okay, and then how to construct the physical address is by concatenate, concatenating the physical frame number facts from that corresponding element within the page table, concatenate it with this um, offset unchanged. 
combine these two together to construct the physical address. And then you further use this physical address to just look into this physical memory. As you can see, you can use this generated, this fast physical frame number as the index, okay? So essentially, it has a total number of um, f plus one, f, f, uh, um, um, f minus one uh, virtual pages, uh, physical frame, sorry, um, before this particular frame block. So after locating this physical frame block, then you use this D, which is the offset, to look into um, this particular physical frame to fetch the, the, the corresponding bytes from therein. Okay, so this is exactly how I perform this essentially physical memory access. Okay, so in this example, so on the left hand side, it shows before this process gets loaded into the memory. Okay. So first of all, this process would require total number of four pages, a total number of four physical frames. So this is its memory capacity, okay? And uh, at the top, it shows the, the free frame list. This is a free list, the free block list that is tracked by the operating system at runtime. It shows which exact physical frame is uh, a way available to grab and allocate it to a new process. So this is before allocation. And uh, this is after allocation, okay? So after loading this process, this four page worth process into the memory, operating system is responsible for constructing a page table, a per process for this particular new, new process, page table, okay? So again, it's memory capacity, virtual memory spans like four physical frames, four virtual pages uses index to index into the page table as the virtual page number. And the content within the page table is essentially what? It's essentially the physical frame number. So let's say it's first virtual page, virtual page number zero. Okay, gets mapped to what physical frame? Physical frame number 14, right? Which is located over here. And the second virtual page number, virtual page number one, gets mapped to physical frame number 13, which is over here, okay? So this is how exactly you perform the virtual page number to physical frame number translation. And similarly, you can do the rest for the, to the left two uh, virtual page numbers, okay? So a little bit more on the page table, fundamentals about page table. So first of all, in order to provide better performance, the page table data structure is kept within the main memory, even though it's part of the memory data structure, in memory data structure. As we'll be talking about in the next um, lecture, is even though keep the whole memory, uh, the, the whole page table data structure within, within memory, the, 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 the address translation speed is still slow because it's accessing memory. Accessing memory is slow, uh, as compared to accessing some specific purpose, hardware, cache, accelerator, in that case, translation local side buffer, TLB. We'll be talking about in more detail about this TLB concept in the next uh, video, okay? And within the page table, each page table entry, in short, PTE, holds some uh, bookkeeping information, but the most important in information is the physical translation, which is nothing but the physical frame number and together with some other bits, okay? And how to locate a particular page table is that the operating system maintains these two values, two registers. The page table base register, PTBR, together with the page table length register, PTLR. Okay, this is kind of like the base and bounds approach. So you locate the starting address of the page table. Since the page table is just a linear array, you, you just use the length register to specify its bounds, okay? So this is how a regular normal page table entry looks like, okay? So assume this is uh, 
So this is uh, the, at, at the bottom of the slide, it shows an example of the 32-bit x86 page table entry. The high bits reserved for a physical frame number and the low bits, it maintains some important page status information that we'll be talking about in the next uh, video. Okay.